stories about black history, 10 things your child should know, and workbooks on division, multiplication, and fractions can all be found on our website at searchblackeneducation.com. Albany State University was founded in 1903 as the Albany Bible Emanuel Training Institute. It was established to provide religious and basic education as well as teacher training to black citizens in Albany. As the school grew, it eventually received support from the state of Georgia and became a part of the university system of Georgia. In 2015, the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia voted to have the local Darton State College join and be merged with Albany State University. Today, the university combines the best of both institutions while remaining true to its long and storied traditions. But the story of any institution is also told through the experiences of its people. In 1959, Annette Jones, a young lady who would later be elected Miss Albany State College, was at a drive-in restaurant in Albany. She and two other students, Yvonne Taylor and Khalila Bailey, went to the window to get their food. When they got their food, Annette said that she didn't want to eat in the car, and she didn't want to eat while they were driving because she might waste her food. So she said, I want to sit in the benches over there and eat. One of her friends said, you know that's not for you. And Annette replied, I don't know that. There are no signs. They went over to the benches and sat down and began eating. The manager and people inside the restaurant were staring at them. And finally, a limousine came through, and it drove around and circled around them twice. Then the chauffeur got out of the limousine and went to the manager. Then the manager came over to them and said, I really appreciate your business, but we don't get enough business from y'all for me to upset my regular customers. You have to go. So Annette said, okay. Then the manager went back inside, and Yvonne and Kalita started gathering up their stuff. But Annette, Annette said, we're not going anywhere. She decided to stay right there and she finished eating her food and never came back to that restaurant even after it was desegregated. That was the kind of activism and fight for justice that was in the minds and hearts of many students in Albany and in Albany State in the 1950s and early 1960s. So when the civil rights fight came to Albany, Georgia, front and center, students at Albany State Collins were in the thick of it, including Annette Jones. National organizations like the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and many more came to Albany as students there and adults tried to challenge segregation that still existed in interstate buses. It's one thing for the federal government to say that segregation should not exist. It's another thing entirely to enforce it. Here, Annette Jones and other students at Albany State were active in protests at bus depots and on city streets. The students were arrested for disturbing the peace, for trying to buy tickets at whites-only bus counters, for example. William Dennis, who was the president of Albany State at the time, had to decide whether to support the students or to bend to the pressures from the outside of the college. Dennis chose to expel some 40 Albany State students, including Annette Jones, who was to become Miss Albany State at the time. Annette Jones and students like Bernice Johnson Reagan were forced to leave Albany State. Some lost their scholarships and others went on to other HBCUs to graduate. So 50 years later, under a new president, Everett J. Friedman, Albany State University invited members and representatives of all the expelled students it could find back to Albany State and gave them honorary degrees. Bernice Johnson Reagan, one of Albany's most distinguished former students and founder of the well-known freedom singing group Sweet Honey and the Rock, said of her experiences in Albany, all around me people were getting arrested, beaten, losing their jobs. I thought those of us who were fighting the legal system would have to pay the consequences. I was so clear that I was going to walk this particular journey. There were quite a few of us who were not deterred. We just kept looking for ways to help push and build a movement in Southwest Georgia.